In this lesson, we're going to set up the environment for our render. All right, so now that we have set up all of our materials and we're ready to render this out, we want to set up some sort of environment for this to live in. So let's do this by going up to Rendering and Environment. This will allow us to use an environment map or a texture to use as a background. So to do this, let's click on None and choose bitmap. Um, inside of your images folder, okay, you can see the path to that, you'll want to use this uh, file here and this is just going to be a simple JPEG of um, the office. So we'll hit open on that and if we were to come in and click render you're going to notice a problem here. You'll notice that we have our arcade cabinet but then we also have the image which is really blown out. Um, there's a little bit of a problem with this and we'll need to set up the texture properly. So to do that, uh, what we want to do is open up our materials editor and I actually want to set up the texture that we've used inside here. So to do this, let me go ahead and zoom out here. I'm going to drag in that map. So let's drag and drop that in here. We're going to use this as an instance, meaning that we're linking this to the environment map here in our environment and we'll hit OK. So double click on that map and you'll notice the dotted line around it and what we want to do is we want to change it uh, from its mapping uh, coordinates. So it's using a spherical environment and so what it's doing is it's trying to wrap that texture in a spherical shape but I only want it to match to the screen. So let's go ahead and click on this drop down and choose screen. So now with that if we were to come in and click on this quick render, it's going to go through and render and there is the texture. So now that we have this in some sort of environment, uh, what we can do now is we can start to uh, place the arcade cabinet kind of where it looks like it's inside of the scene. Now there are a couple of problems with this. Uh, first off, it doesn't uh, actually match the lighting and also there are no shadows that are being cast. And it seems as though it's pretty large and it's not really set right inside of the environment. Not a big deal though. Let's take one thing at a time. Let's go ahead and deal with the lighting on this. So the light that I want to use in this case is going to be a skylight. Let's close down our material editor for just a moment and also in our environment. And let's go to our create tab and then we're going to go to lights and let's bring in um, a skylight. Now to do this we'll need to switch to the standard lights and here we have skylight. Okay, so let's go ahead and left click on that and drop that right here in our scene. It doesn't really matter where, just place it. Let's go ahead and right click to turn off that process and with that skylight still selected, let's go to our modify tab. So now that we have the skylight in, let's go ahead and click on this none because I actually want to use a spherical map to get my lighting information and I want that to match to the image um, that I use for my background. So let's left click right here on our map and let's choose bitmap. Now instead of using that same image, I'm going to use the spherical map that was created. Now this is of the same um, area, the same environment, it's just created in a different way. So with this, let's hit open and we're just going to click OK on this and that's going to apply itself. Now if I were to come in here and actually choose render Okay, and quickly render that. You'll notice that it's very, very dark. Now this is not necessarily a problem with the light itself. We don't need to bump up its brightness. Um, it's actually being used in the wrong way. So what do I mean by that? Well, remember how the background appeared to be really enlarged and didn't look quite right? We have that same kind of issue here with this new map. So um, to fix this, let's go to our material editor and let's left click and drag this image into our editor and make sure that's set to instance and OK. Double click on that and you'll notice here at the top we're still using the coordinates um, and this time it's actually an explicit map channel and we don't want that. We want to use the environment map and the mapping we want to set to spherical environment. So now with that set what we can do is we can go ahead and close that and then re-render and that should brighten up the cabinet a little bit. Now it's going to um, match uh, the information that's put in there 
and that's looking pretty good. Now it's not the best that it could be. We could go ahead and bump that up. and Let's go ahead and do so. So let's go ahead and take a look at our material. Let's close that down. And we have our spherical map. And what I want to do is I want to uh, remove some of the gamma information that's being applied here. So let's go ahead and right click and let's go to Maps, Standard, and I'm looking for the gamma map here. And actually it's, I think it might be, yes, it's under Mental Ray. So we'll go to Gamma and Gain. And what we'll do with this is we're going to go ahead and just plug that in right here. Great. And then we'll double click on that and this should show us um, some of our information here. Now, with that turned on, we want to turn this reverse gamma correction off. So let's go ahead and turn that off. And then what we'll do is we'll plug this back into our light. So the way we do that is simply left click and drag that over to here. And again, we're going to make that an instance and hit OK on that. And there we go. So now let's go ahead and take a look at this, see what that looks like. Um, let me go ahead and re-render that. And you should see that arcade cabinet kind of brighten up in some areas. And now it's starting to get a little bit more um, on the level of our environment. Now, it may still be a little bit dark. And we can always come in and we can bump up that multiplier there. All right, so let's go ahead and close this down. And let's work on the shadow next. So to get a shadow, we need to bring in a plane object. Okay, so let's go ahead and just turn off that auto grid. And I'm going to go ahead and just drag this underneath the arcade cabinet here. Now we don't need to make this really large or anything like that, but we want to make sure that it gets enough information that it can capture any shadows that it would be in. So let's go ahead and go to our modify panel. Let's take the segments down to one by one. There we go. And then I'm going to apply a material to this. So let's go ahead and go to our materials. And what we need to do is bring in just a standard material. And I'm going to be working off of this opacity because the only thing that I want are the shadow information. Okay, So I'm just going to go ahead and drag that out. And let's go ahead and bring in an ambient occlusion. This is going to be under mental ray. So ambient reflective occlusion. There we go. And with that set, let's go ahead and double click on that. Taking a look at our colors. Um, everything's brought in here. Um, let me go ahead and take my diffuse color down to black on that. And let's assign that to the selection. And if I come in and I render this out, you'll notice that um, the plane is black, but then we get a little bit of transparency here in the middle where the shadow uh, should be from our object. And so what I want to do is go ahead and reverse the colors of that ambient uh, reflective material. So let's simply hit cancel on our render. We'll close that down and we'll close our render. Go back to your materials and double click on the ambient and switch these colors. So let's switch this to black and then we'll switch this to white. Okay. Go ahead and re-render that and you should see a shadow appearing before the cabinet. Now we don't want to move that plane or the the cabinet itself. We actually want to uh, move our camera accordingly and try to match the image that we have here. Alright, so let's go ahead and cancel that here. As I'm finished with that, let's go ahead and move in. Let's try to bring this in kind of look a little bit differently. Now whenever I'm ready to render, I'm going to go ahead and click on uh, my perspective and I'm going to hit show safe frames. What this is going to do is it's going to show me the aspect ratio of my render settings. Okay, I can change what size I want this to render out at. So I'm going to do something like 1280 by 720. Okay, and You'll notice how that changes there. And I know that anything that's in here is going to be rendered out. So Let's go ahead and zoom in just a little bit. Hold down Control, Alt, and the middle mouse button. You can zoom in very smoothly. And there we go. Now there is one problem that I'm having with my material, and that is our screen material. And that screen material was highly, highly reflective. And I don't want that. So I'm going to take the reflectivity. Let's go ahead and just turn that off 
uh, for right now. And let's do this instead. Let's see if we can. And let's turn on the self illumination on that just to make it a little bit brighter so it shows up there. And we're just going to do something like a dim glow. Okay, well, that looks good. And we'll close that down. And with this set, let's go ahead and render that. Now you'll notice that the render window becomes much, much larger. I apologize for that. Let me go ahead and resize this some. Okay. There we go. So we can see all of our controls. And you'll see that this begins to render out. Now notice that this is looking much, much better. The lighting information is looking pretty good. We might need to do a little bit of tweaking with that skylight, try to brighten it up maybe just a little bit. But you can see that it's matching pretty well um, inside of our environment. We get the shadows, see how it brings it all together, it grounds it into the background. We're getting uh, the reflectivity off of our glass. Uh, we're even getting some of the specular highlights on some of the plastic and the, the materials that we've created here. And that's looking pretty good. All right, so at this point you would want to go ahead and just uh, wait for your render to finish. Okay, if you're happy with the angle that you've got, if you're happy with some of the different results, um, and you're ready to move on to the final render, what you would want to do is you'd come in and you'd start to adjust your uh, quality settings here. So, for example, like our image precision, we may go ahead and bump that up. Of course, once this is finished rendering out um, its current state, um, you'll go ahead and you'll bump that up. We'll do something like um, the image precision will do high quality, soft shadows will do two times high quality, glossy refractions we can do normal or even high quality, uh, glossy refraction, okay. Now by increasing all of this you're going to um, ultimately lengthen out your render times. Another thing that I would suggest on this is doing a couple of um, final gather bounces so that way it can gather some information and spread those those shadows out um, in a more accurate fashion. And then you'll go ahead and hit render and be prepared to wait maybe about 15 to 20 minutes depending on your machine itself. It may take longer than that, but this is one way that you can uh, go through and create a highly realistic render. So throughout this course, we started from scratch. We talked about how to navigate in the viewport very quickly just to get you up and running. Uh, We've talked about how to use lines to create geometry shapes. And we've talked about a couple of different modeling tools that are you'll come in contact with uh, quite a bit. And we just wanted to get you up and running with modeling and some of the major features uh, that you'll come in contact with in your first day working at 3ds Max. So I hope you guys learned a lot, and I hope you guys are successful in your first day with 3ds Max. And I'll see you guys next time.